With so much changing in our classrooms, it can be really difficult to keep up. Today, I talk with Jess Boyce from Flipgrid about why student relationships need to remain at the core of our work. Welcome to Focus on K-12, EdTech and the Education Experience. I'm your host, Doug Conopelko, Education Strategist at CDWG. So let's dive in as we focus on K-12. My name is Jess Boyce. I am an educator innovation lead at Flipgrid, which is a super fancy way to say I'm a teacher helping teachers. Uh, I am a former middle school math teacher. I was in the classroom for 10 years, both in Pennsylvania and then in Florida. Um, I was actually using Flipgrid in my classroom and totally fell in love with it. And at the same time, I had fallen in love with teaching teachers and going to conferences and sharing and, and just celebrating all things education. So it was kind of a no brainer. I hit this point where I knew I felt called to leave the classroom, but I knew exactly where I wanted to be. So I joined the Flipgrid team about three years ago, and now I just get to... Um, help teachers in any way possible, which is incredible. Right. As long as it doesn't involve travel anymore, right? We're not allowed to do that. Exactly. I so, get to virtually <laughs> help teachers in any way possible. Right. I'm missing going to classrooms, that's for sure. Right. So a lot has obviously changed about education this year, mm -hmm. um, how we see schools and districts and their work playing out, you know, hybrid, concurrent classrooms, all of those things, travel, no travel, conferences, virtual conferences. So an easier question might be, what hasn't changed this year? Yeah, everything is different. Uh, you're completely right. I know here in Florida, and it's probably the same where you are, everyone's back in school full time, but there's also places that are not back in school at all and anywhere in between. Um, I think the one thing that has remained constant is the importance of getting to know your students. And I think that that actually now more than ever, so it might even be amplified. Um, that's always been something so important, right? Building those relationships, getting to know your students, social, emotional learning. Uh, but I think that it really may be heightened at this point in time. So where does your sort of love for that lie or where does it come from? I, I think back to when I was in school and I think that our generation and our parents' generation, it was very much there's a teacher and they are at the front of the class and they are talking and you're writing notes and there's no community, there's no interaction, you're just kind of there to, to answer the question, you know, kind of like factory style. Um, and I craved more, I, I think as, as human beings, we kind of crave that community. And so as I was in my uh, undergrad studies and realizing that I, I knew I had a passion for teachers or for teaching, excuse me, but I really wanted to make sure that I knew my students better, that, that my classroom felt like a safe space more than just a place where you're there to work to get the grade. Yeah. So how, maybe give me a couple examples of how that played out in your room. Yeah. Um, so one of my favorite ways is the, the physical representation of that. And so I, I was one of those teachers that got rid of all of their desks and had futons and couches and, and comfortable places because I wanted as my students were walking in, I wanted them to feel comfortable right from the from the get-go. I feel like that's really important. But then I also just spent a lot of time getting to know them. You know, when you have that student who wants to interrupt and tell you about a random thing, I would let them talk for a minute, you know, and kind of go off on those tangents. I realized that the importance of those things, that when a student feels heard, they everything else falls into place. And so I really spent that time asking them about themselves, getting to know them, eating lunch with them. Um, that was one of my favorite things. I never, ever ate in the teacher's lounge. Um, I really, I would have students would come back to my classroom or sometimes I would even go to the cafeteria and just sit and have those moments where we weren't talking about math. We were talking about their soccer game over the weekend or something like that. Yeah. So important to connect on those moments. Uh, love, love whenever you get to build that relationship. And I think one of the most important things that, you know, I take away when we have these relationship conversations, when we're thinking about the relationships we have with our students is that, you know, the most important thing to us that day in the classroom is definitely not the most important thing right. to them that day in the classroom. Right. And when we can recognize that and embrace it, I think it really helps. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so, so important. So what are some practical tips or ideas that you might give to people who are in the classroom now to help them that want that are saying, I want to have better relationships with my students? I think really starting small, this sounds so basic, but 
just asking them questions. Hey, what's your favorite food? Those, those really simple things that give them an opportunity to talk about themselves that has nothing to do with what's going on in the classroom and being like, oh my gosh, Mrs. Boyce wants to know this little thing about me. Let me, let me open up to her. Um, I think that those tiny little things lead to bigger things, um, you know, and we all love to talk about ourselves, right? It's just kind of human nature. We like to share the things that we're doing, what we're passionate about. And so just simply asking is, is huge. And like I mentioned, you know, how many times you have a student that's like, hey, I really want to tell you this. And you know that it's not relevant to what's going on in that situation. And you kind of are like, okay, yes, sit down later, 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 later never comes, but maybe making sure either that later comes or taking 30 seconds to say, Hey, tell me what it is that you want to tell me. I think just those tiny things really do make a difference. Um, something else that I think is helpful with that is opening up as well as the educator showing more of yourself. Um, you know, little things like I am a huge Steelers fan. So I would have some Steelers stuff hanging in my classroom and they'd be like, what is that yellow towel? And I'm like, okay, let me tell you about the terrible towel. Let me look up this YouTube video and show you everyone waving their towels and what that means. And just these little tiny things that once they see you as a human being as well, it kind of creates this space of comfort and, and knowing that I can also, you know, I would have kids that are like, Oh, did you watch that game this week? And I'm like, heck yeah, I did. And have those conversations. And you just, you're able to make these little connections that, like I said, lead to a lot bigger connections. Absolutely. So I think one of the things that we hear sometimes when we talk about uh, relationships with students, first of all, is like the, the, people's danger zone comes up, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, did you just say relationships with students? You're right. like, I don't, I don't mean that. I don't mean what mm -hmm. you're thinking right? Thing you're freaking out about. I mean, having <laughs> like a relationship with the students and you're like, yeah. I understand I said the same words again, slower, but, but you, you know like what I mean? You said it. It yeah. But I moved my hands. <laughs> so it's different. So, uh, which does is not going to translate well to the podcast, but that's okay. They should tune in on YouTube. <laughs> So, um, so what, what might you say to folks that might push back on the idea of teaching with relationships first, or that are in that have trouble maybe wrapping their head around getting away from like the danger zone idea? Yeah, I would really encourage people to think about their own relationships. Who are you more, li more likely to open up around, right? Or think about your own workplace and, you do better work if you feel like your boss cares about you, right? It's the exact same thing of just knowing that there's someone there and you don't have to be hanging out with them. I'm not even saying go eat lunch with your boss every day, but knowing that your boss cares and isn't just like breathing down your neck all the time and actually maybe asks you about yourself, different things like that, you then feel more confident that you want to do better work for them. And I think that that really translates to the classroom in the same exact way of knowing she cares about me. I want to do better work for her because of that. Um, and like I said, there has to be there has to be a balance. I'm, I'm not saying give all of your students your phone number the first day of school or ever. Um, but I do think taking those extra minutes really does go a long way. Um, and just helping them to know that they're not just a number and that they count as people and that they matter as people. Um, I know we talked in the past before of, you know, I have worked in a lot of places where I might be the only adult that, that is there on a consistent basis for that student. And so really letting them know that I do care about them is of the utmost importance. Um, you know, just knowing about their interests, knowing about what the, makes them tick. I really do think that then you can even mold your curriculum to that. If I know that someone has this huge interest in something, I can work that into a problem or all of those little things. I think that it just really helps to build an environment. Um, and like I said, a, a safe space for your students. Well, I think you hit on an important point toward the beginning of that as well in saying that just because I'm trying to build relationships first with my students doesn't mean that we don't have boundaries. Exactly. 
Exactly. Boundaries have to be there. I, I still hold my students to a really high standard. I have high expectations for them. It's not like, you know, I, I'm the, the teacher that's just like, hey, come hang out. No, absolutely not. I want you to know that I care about you, but because I care about you, I'm going to push you harder. And it kind of, it, it, I liken it to a parent relationship, right? You, you discipline your students or you push them really hard or your students, your children, you're, you push them hard because you care about them. And I think that there's a lot of parallels there. I had shared with you that story about my student who, you know, I had for two years, uh, saw them again at graduation. So I was high school science. So I had them in ninth grade, 10th grade, saw them at graduation and came up to me so excited, like pointing at his chest as if I should know what's going on with him. Right. And then I said, so, Hey, what's going on? And he said, you taught me how to tie a tie. Mm. Right. And it was one of those moments where he probably couldn't then repeat back to me anything we had gone over in class, but it was so important to him right. that that's what he had learned. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like your heart probably swelled up in that moment because maybe you weren't even thinking about tying the tie and, and that, Hey, this is an important life skill that I'm teaching him. It's just, Oh, let me do this really quick and help you out. But that made such a lasting impact. And I think that those moments are, what, what it's really about. I can't tell you moments in my middle school career or before or after that. I'm like, Oh, I loved that time that I learned about dividing fractions, but I can tell you about the time where my seventh grade math teacher made me feel like garbage. You know, I can, I remember those moments and I remember the times that I had teachers that made me feel great. And so I think that there's just that underlying factor there. Um, yeah, I have, I have stories like that too. And, and even one that there was this student who was known as like a bad kid um, on campus. And I had teachers that would come up to me and say, why does she work for you? Why is she so well behaved in your classroom? And I said, oh, because I respect her and just kind of would leave it at that. I respect her as a human being. I'm not expecting her to be a terror the second she walks in and I'm, you know, I'm getting to know her. I know things about what sports she does outside of school. I know, you know, just different little things and just taking those extra moments really do make a difference. Um, I've had kids that are like, oh my gosh, will you come to my soccer game this weekend? Will you come to my basketball game? Will you come to my birthday party? I'm like, okay. Sure. And, you know, it, in that, it ends up building a better relationship with the parents as well, because they're like, wow, this woman is taking a time on her Saturday to come and sit. I've brought my husband and we'll go sit at your basketball game and watch. And I think that those things really are opening the parents' eyes too of my kid matters to the teacher, which is huge because of course your own child is so important to you. And so to see that the teacher is investing time as well, it just really, it helps, you know, we're all in this together and it really helps that, uh, that relationship between everybody. Yeah. And, and probably another thing that's important for people that are listening or watching to understand, or people that are thinking about relationships in the classroom is I can say that I can point to a few really great examples of when this paid tremendous dividends. I could point to a number of examples where it didn't seem to change anything. I can point to examples where maybe I missed a huge opportunity that I didn't know was an opportunity at the time, because to your point, sometimes it's things that seem so small to us that end up as the, as the snowball rolls downhill, which is a terrible example for us to use in Florida, <laughs> um, you know, it, it builds up to be something really big for that student down the line, right? It's just listening when they ask you to listen. Absolutely. And just creating that culture as well. So it's not always just tweet teacher and student. I really tried to create a culture where everyone respected one another. And I think that that then is going to be something that carries on down the line too. You might not be a great math mathematician. I can't even say it. You might not be a great mathematician, but maybe you're going to be a good person and you're going to know these things that you need to do in order to care about human beings in general, which I think is kind of what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, Jess, thank you so much. Love the conversation. Love the positivity. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us today on Focus on K-12 EdTech and the Education Experience. If you enjoyed today's show, please feel free to like, subscribe, and click the little bell so that you get notified whenever we post a new episode. 
or reach out to me on Twitter at DConopelco. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time as we focus on K-12.